The English sonnet is a wonderful paradox um, in that it is a very ostentatious display of love. It's like declaring your love in a Valentine's message in the paper or something like that. On the other hand, it also takes you right into the heart of your feelings. It's a declaration of love, so in that sense, a very private, inward um, expression of, of emotion. The flamboyance of the sonnet is also there in manipulating the sonnet form itself. So the poet writing a 14-line sonnet is constantly playing with that form and structuring it and showing off their poetic skill. The inner idea of expressing your emotions takes you through a range of different layers or levels in the sonnet, going right into the inside, if you like, through the doorways um, and into the inner heart of the poet. The English sonnet developed through White and Surrey during Henry VIII's reign, um, translating sonnets from the Italian form where it was invented by Petrarch, and then was taken up in the 1590s by English poets who manipulated the form and started to write original um, sonnets. And it's very appropriate that I'm talking about the sonnet here at Penshurst, Penshurst Place, which is the home of the Sidney family, the most famous writer, Philip Sidney, producing a wonderful collection of sonnets, Astrophil and Stella, published in 1595. Philip Sidney um, also wrote sonnets as part of his long prose romance, The Arcadia, and that gave you a sense of the songs as to be sung, because one of the sonnets, um, and set, well, several of them indeed, are written for shepherdesses or shepherds to sing to their beloveds. And this one that I'm going to read um, has a shepherdess addressing her beloved who's lying in her lap as she reads it. She sings, my true love hath my heart and I have his, by just exchange the one for the other given. I hold his dear and mine he cannot miss. There never was a better bargain driven. His heart in me keeps me and him in one. My heart in him, his thoughts and senses guides. He loves my heart, for once it was his own. I cherish his, because in me it bides. So a real sense of coming together between the sonneteer and the beloved there. And they're physically close together as she's holding him in his lap. That's not typical of sonnets though. Most sonnets um, express from the Petrarchan tradition um, a situation of unrequited love, where the lover is suffering because his beloved is scornful, disdainful, um, or just doesn't even know he exists. And so we get lots of sonnets dwelling on the fact that the lover is lost, um, wandering in a maze or a labyrinth of love that they can't control. And that notion of the sonnet as something which is associated with the landscape, with wandering in a maze, is very much linked to its association with pastoral romance and the idea of wandering through gardens, like the formal gardens here at Penshurst. Sonnets were carried around in public um, at the court, displayed hanging from your belt, circulated in manuscript. So in that sense, they were public documents but they were always secret documents as well in that they contained coded messages, um, allusions that could only be picked out by the recipient and those in the know. And for Astrophil and Stella, many of the coded allusions are to um, Stella, um, Lady Rich, with whom Philip Sidney was in love, who got married to um, Lord Rich. And so there are lots of games with the name Rich played on in the sonnets. Not only Philip wrote sonnets, his, the rest of his family wrote sonnets. Um, his uh, brother, um, whose name was Robert, wrote sonnets. Um, and his niece, um, Lady Mary Roth, wrote an extended sonnet sequence, talking again about her unrequited love, the, the heroine, sonnet speaker, Pamphylia, um, for the faithless Amphilanthus. So here we are in one of the formal gardens at Penshurst which seems to encapsulate that notion of a maze or a travelling through love, unrequited. So here's Lady Mary Roth's sonnet, where she writes, In this strange labyrinth, how shall I turn? Ways on all sides, while on the way I miss. If to the right hand, there in love I burn, let me go forward, there in danger is. If to the left, suspicion hinders bliss, let me turn back, shame cries I ought return. 
nor faint though crosses with my fortune kiss. Stand still is hard.